So the last thing that we're going to be building to round this series off is the navigation at the top of the page, which thanks to the placeholder we've created for the inline list and the transition uh, that we created to transition on any element uh, for any length of time and any effect, this isn't going to be too difficult. So let's lay out the markup again, first of all. Uh, I'm going to do this above the wrapper so it sits nicely at the top of the page, full width. And we are going to have a nav element with a class of top nav. And we can style up the rest or write up the rest of the markup. We can create our component and start writing the code for this right away. So inside of here, then I'm going to have a div with a class of logo. Um, I'm just going to write code course in here for now, but you can obviously include an image and fiddle around with the styles to position that. Uh, and we're also going to have an unordered list in here. And this is going to have a class of top nav items. We could of course give this a class of inline if we wanted it, to, if we uh, wanted to use inline lists, but we're going to be using the placeholder uh, that we created for an inline list to utilize that. So we can go ahead and add um, sort of more custom uh, styles to this. So inside of here, we obviously have list items and we're just going to say something like home and we'll create a few more here. So videos, and get in touch. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the markup. Doesn't look great at the moment, but let's create our component inside of our components directory for our nav. So I'm just gonna call this nav.scss and we can start styling this up now. So remember the class is called top nav. We're going to set a background color here and we're gonna use a variable nav bg color. Uh, so let's define this inside of variables. Let's come down here and say nav. So we want nav bg color. And we can obviously just choose a color for this. I'm gonna say 444. Let's define some other variables for our nav while we're just in here. So we're gonna have the nav text color and we're gonna have a nav link color as well. So for the text color, that's gonna be white. And for the link color, uh, that's gonna be a uh, lighter gray. So back over to our component then, we have our background color that we've already created. We're gonna give our nav a height of 60 pixels. We're gonna set the color, which we already have a variable for, is nav text color. So that's the color across the entire nav. I'm gonna set the margin on the bottom to 20 pixels. So let's just preview this uh, once we've included it again into our components list. So that's nav. When we refresh, we see the following. So it's still not looking uh, amazing. We need to sort out this, uh, this inline list here. So what we're going to do then is we're going to position the logo and we're gonna float this left. We're gonna have a height of 60 pixels on here. We're gonna have a line height of 60 as well to center that text vertically and we are going to have a margin on the left of 20 pixels and that just pulls that into the following position the reason for this spacing here is because of this um, unordered list but we're going to sort that out now so remember we gave that a class of top nav items and easy as possible we just extend inline list which is our placeholder here remember and that's gone ahead and magically made that an inline list. Perfect. So what we can do now is float this left as well. So it sits next to the logo. We can give this a line height of 60 pixels as well. We're going to give it a margin left of 40 pixels to bring it away from the logo. And for the nav items, we're going to have 0.9M on the font size. So we see the following nice and lined up. So now, Inside of this, we're gonna nest again. So we're gonna say any anchor within our top nav items unordered list. We want to display these as a block. We want to give these a height of 60 pixels because we're gonna have a hover effect on this. So we uh, want to change the color. And we're gonna set a padding of zero on the top and bottom. And we're gonna pad this out on the left and the right. So we have the following. So if we just inspect this here, we can see that each anchor is the height of the navigation. 
So that gives us the ability to have a large click area and also have a background color show up when we hover over each one of these. So again, we're going to set the color. Uh, we already have a uh, nav link color variable for this. I'm going to set the font weight to 400 like so. I'm going to remove the text decoration. We want that to be none. So we now have the following. So when we hover over these, we want the text color to be white and we can change the background color of this entire thing if we want to. Um, in fact, we won't do that, but you can go ahead and try and implement that. So what we want to do now is we want to uh, set this hover. So let's say hover color white and we can easily include our transition now because we already have uh, the mixing created to transition on any property for a given length of time with any effect. So we can just easily say include transition. We can transition on color for 100 milliseconds. And again, we want this to ease in. So now when we hover over the text, as well as it turning white, we now have this nice uh, transition on that. And of course, what you could do is go ahead and transition the background color as well using the hover background mix-in that we created earlier too. But I'll leave that up to you to go ahead and try and implement and see how you get on. And you can go ahead and rearrange this navigation uh, to suit you and just play around generally, uh, just tidying up anything you think would be better uh, that would be reusable. So for example, we can see here that the line height would be a really good uh, reusable part of this because for both the logo and the top nav items, uh, we're setting the line height. What we could do is we could maybe create a mix in to pass in the height of an element and then we could create a placeholder which goes uh, or a mix in rather which goes ahead and gives you the line height based on that height to vertically align text. But I'll leave that up to you to go ahead and create your own mix in to do that or anything else you think would be necessary. So we've come to the end of this series and we've pretty much looked at all of the features that we would use on a daily basis when we're writing code uh, and compiling with SAS. We've been using the SCSS syntax, but of course you're free to go ahead and use the SAS syntax if you wanted to. We've learned how to structure our application in a way that it makes it really easy for us to find things. We automatically know that we have mix-ins, placeholders, and uh, our entire array of variables here, as well as each one of our components that we've built uh, that we can just easily click on, start modifying, and uh, go ahead and update our design. So that's it, a very basic look at writing styles using SAS.